Hello, Alexander. Hello, Anand. Hello. Hello, Anand. Hello, Alexander. Okay, so if you have any question during the lecture, feel free to unmute yourself. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, hello, man. Can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself, okay? Okay. So, hello, everyone. Welcome. To welcome back <laughs> from the reading break. At first, I want to discuss with you the uh, presentation. Who want to participate? Who don't want? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I believe that this presentation can help you to improve your marks. Is three marks maximum, okay? This can help you to uh, improve your midterm exam. And maybe your final exam, maybe your off day. So you may need these three marks, but don't worry, the, the final exam, yeah, will be direct exam. So don't worry about this, okay? So I believe that it is a chance to you to help yourself. I want to help you, but for sure, I will not give you free marks. <laughs> no, you, you have to do some work to get this one. Yeah. So I believe that this presentation is a good chance to help yourself to improve your marks. So uh, uh, I really recommend all of you to participate in this presentation. If you will participate alone, you will have 10 minutes maximum to present a topic or idea, okay? Maybe this is your own idea. Okay, that's good. As it is related to communication network course, it's okay for me, okay? So if you will present only by yourself, you have 10 minutes maximum. If you are a team, maximum two, you will have 20 minutes maximum. 10 minutes for each of you, okay? So I think that this is a good chance. So you must take it in your consideration, okay? The date of this presentation will be our last lecture in this term. The last day of lecture will be 7 December, yeah? Tuesday? <laughs> Maybe Monday. Monday the 6th. So yeah, Monday, okay. So I think this, you still have time. And now I also want to remind you that you have less than one month to the final exam, okay? So let's work hard, do your best. It's only less than one month, okay? Work hard for only less than one month and you will for sure achieve your goals and they get the full marks, okay? So till now, who want to participate in the presentation and who is still thinking about participating? So you are a team, 
Okay. You know, what is it? You don't have time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For a man, you will participate. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. yeah, I wanted to participate. Yeah, alone or in a team? Uh, in a team. Okay. Preston? And Alexander? Alexander, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Preston, you want to participate? I'll, yeah. I'll participate. Yeah, you have already team or not yet? Preston, you, you have a team or not? Uh, I think, yeah. You have? Yeah. Okay. Do you do you name do you do you know the, the name of your teammate? Hmm? Uh, who who will be your teammate? Um uh Duncan, I guess. Duncan. Okay. So yeah, I be, I I know that to, to, uh, Thomas will, will participate. So we may form a team between Thomas and the Iman, but we can discuss this uh, when Thomas join us. Okay, so we can confirm this or not. Okay, so we still have time. Okay, okay but what what I want from you from the participants. Hello, for who, who will present, please confirm to me your topic this Friday, okay? Because I want to know the topic. You should just make a Canvas quiz where people can put in their topic. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to, to make it as a quiz? No, no, I'm saying you want to know everyone's topic, just make it easy, like just make a Canvas quiz where people can go in and type, like, so you see whatever on top. You can just like have the question be find your topic and then just be like a text box that kind of things. Mm. So, so you want you want for me to recommend to you uh, some topics? No, no, never mm. No, it's different. I was thinking like yeah, yeah. No, you see then more. What, what? Okay, so like instead of everyone coming into class and saying, "Hey, I'm going to do this for my topic," and you writing it down. Just make a quiz on Canvas. Yeah, yeah, and you can submit uh, 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 your, your title on, on exactly. Canvas. Yeah. Okay, this is a good idea. Okay, okay. So I will create uh, a quiz or assignment on uh, on Canvas, and uh, uh, all the participants can uh, uh, send or submit their presentation title by this Friday. Okay. Okay, so let's start our lecture today. I will share my screen. And again, for you, for Daniel and Eva, yeah, I still recommend you to participate if you have time. Okay. Okay, so hello, everyone. On our last lecture, we discussed together the viewer aloha as a random multiple access technique. And as we know, in pure Aloha, if you have any frame to transmit, transmit. You don't have to ask for any permission. You don't ask for any resources available. No. <laughs> Once I want to say something, I will unmute you myself. OK? So this is. The viewer alone. As we know, in random multiple access techniques, more than one device can share the same channel. So if we have more than transmission over this channel at the same time, we will have collision. Okay. So here in viewer aloha. That we can know that we have collision through two techniques. So the feedback or receiving acknowledgement. If we don't receive acknowledgement, this means that we have collision. The second option that we can use to know if we have collision or not is by using or sensing the channel or listening to the channel as the electromagnetic 
energy increases when collision exists. Okay, and as we can know that here, this this frame will be transmitted in error free frame two one and three one and four one will have collisions. Okay, frame two two frame four two will have collisions and the frame three two will transmit it error free. So if any two frames share the same time even if this is my last bit and your and this is your first bit the full two frames will be destroyed or corrupted will have collision okay so this is summarize the basic operation of pure aloha so at first we say we set the back off to zero this is the number of free transmission okay and after that once we have a frame to transmit transmit send the data packet and wait wait for what wait for, for the acknowledgement you receive acknowledgement yes this means that your transmission is correct error free done but what if we don't receive any acknowledgement this means that we have a collision so you will increment your back off this means that you will retransmit okay and check if you reach the limit or not why should i have to do this because maybe we have a major problem in the chat so if i keep retransmit with nothing retransmit retransmit i consume my processing time i consume my resources so no so i have to save my processing time and my resources so if i keep retransmitting without any acknowledgement this means that we have a problem in the channel so i should stop sending to save my processing and my resources okay so i will check yeah reaches the limit no okay so wait random time okay and once i finish this random time i will retransmit again and i will keep until I receive acknowledgement or reach to, the, reach to the limit. This is the basic idea of your error. This is clear to you, yeah? And as we know, in order to ensure that we will not have any collision in your aloha, that we must confirm that during the time equal to double your frame time, no transmission happened. So during your frame time, you must make sure that no one transmit. And in the time slot before your transition time, you must also confirm that no one transmit. And we discussed this example, and if we have uh, 200 bit frames on shared channel, and the data rate of this channel is 200 kilobit per second, so we can calculate the transmission time for each frame, which will equal the number of bits in the frame divided by the, the data rate of the common channel. So we can know that our uh, 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 transmission time per frame is one millisecond. So if we want to ensure that we have collision-free transmission, mm -hmm. we must have calculate the vulnerable time to equal double the transmission time per frame. So our vulnerable time will equal to two milliseconds. Which means that no one should send later than one millisecond before I start transmission. And no one should start sending during my one millisecond period of transmission. Okay? This means that if we make sure that this will happen, we will not have any collision. But what is the probability this can happen? This is very small. And as the number of users increases, as the number of users increase, it just gets worse. For sure. Yeah. Imagine that we have here 100 students. What, what is the probability of we have at least 10 want to send packets at the same time? It's very high. Okay. So, we calculated the throughput of your aloha and we find that the throughput will equal to the load G 
exponential minus 2G. And the reason of 2G, as we have the variable time equal to two transmission time per frame. And for every transmission time per frame, we have low G. But here in pure Aloha, we have the vulnerable time equal to transmission time per frame. So the load during this period will equal 2G. So this is the throughput of pure Aloha. And we had this example here. We calculated that if you want to transmit 100, 1,000 frame, okay, we find that our throughput is 13.5 percent. So only only 135 frame will be collision free. This is very 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 low percent. So we consider the pure aloha as inefficient technique. Is not good for use in nowadays. Yes. So, but again, your Aloha was the first protocol used in random access in 1970. So, in this period, I believe that your Aloha was efficient. During this time, we don't have many number of connected users. We don't have many uh, uh, data we want to transmit over the channel. So, it was good. For my 90, uh, 90, uh, 1970, okay, only. But now we can't use it in Wi-Fi, for example. Imagine if we use it in our network name, it, now it will not be, it will not be efficient. I believe that. So the development over pure Aloha is slotted Aloha. Okay, so the researcher said that one of the problems and your aloha is that once the user wants to, to transmit, transmit. Okay, this increases the probability of collisions. How can we minimize the probability of collision? So at first, they divide the time into time slots. Okay. And Users now can not transmit at any time. No, you must wait to the start of a time slot to transmit. So for example, this is a time. Okay. And this is zero, one, two, three, four. And during 1.5, Daniel want to transmit a frame. In Aloha, your Aloha transmit. Okay. Here in Stuttgart Aloha, no, you are not allowed. What should you do? Wait to the start of the next time slot. So you must wait to the second number two. And once you are now at the beginning of a new time slot, transmit. Okay? Okay. So, but again, if Daniel wants also to transmit at 1.7, what will Daniel do? In your Aloha, what will you do? Transmit. And so Aloha. Oh, okay. what? Next time, so next time. Which one tier? Two. So we will have now Daniel one and Daniel two will transmit at the same time again. And again we will have collision. Okay. So this is in summary the basic idea of Stud Aloha. Instead of transmitting at any time, no, we divide our time into discrete time slots, equal size time slots, and the size of this time slot equal to the transmission 
find their frame, okay? And all the users don't have to transmit at any time. No, they have to wait to the start of the next uh, time slot. If we have two users transmit at the same time slot, at the beginning of the same time slot, we will have collision. And what will we do after we have a collision? Daniel one will wait for random time. And Daniel two will wait for random time. Okay, so Daniel one will wait for random time. And after Daniel one wait, it was two second, two points. Okay. Okay, I finished my, my, my waiting time, my random waiting time. You will check again. Is 2.6 is a, is, a, is a start of new time slot? No. So you will wait for the beginning of next time slot. So you will send at three. Daniel 2, for example, will wait for 3.2. Okay. And we'll check. Is 3.2 is the start of a new time slot? No. So Daniel. Two will wait to the start of time slot. Okay, this is the basic idea of slotted alloc. Okay, how come you wouldn't size the uh, slot bits? Uh, okay, two, 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 two frame and each protocol in, communica in communication network has its own specification and one of these specification is the size of the transmitted frame okay so at first the users will coordinate with each others about the size of each time slot okay and as we are using the same network we it's high probability to use the same protocol Okay, so the size of the time slot will be selected to be equal to the frame size. Okay, this is what will happen. The users at first, okay, will coordinate with each other. Okay, and now if we use this technique, this will be the responsibility of the access point. As the access point now is the provider of the service and it talks to each user which you protocol we will use, okay? So make your frame size this size, okay? And as we know, this can happen through flow control, okay? The sender and the receiver can communicate to determine how many bits can be transmitted per second, okay? So is this case to you first? No, like I, Why? my confusion is more like, we said in Pure Lobo that if we didn't want to have collisions, we have to send it over two, Times transmission time, like if that's time. Time. you are asking about the vulnerable time now. And yeah. it's good, hello, yeah, yeah, you can tell me. Well, the vulnerable time is just the band, but so the vulnerable time in your aloha was two transmission time per frame. This is pure, yeah, and it's so loaded. The one of time would equal to transition. Just the time of time slot. But why is that? Like, why is that the trend that all the time becomes as much as Why what? Why you are what you are asking why in slow time it is only one time slot? Because here we are sure that the transmission will happen at the beginning of time slot. Okay, so I'm sure that no one will start at 1.7. Okay, so the vulnerable time, I must, I, if I want, what is the meaning of vulnerable time? Okay, it is the time, okay, that we must save to prevent any collision. Okay, if anyone will start to transmit at time slot one, he will finish by the end of time slot one. Okay, this is collision free. If you start to transmit a time slot two, 
Okay. And anyone want to start at start of time to, uh, time slot two, you will have collision. The, the period of this collision will be during only. Okay, will be during time slot two only. Okay, so if anyone want to transmit at two point six, we'll wait to time slot three. Will this one have collision with you? No. 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 Why? If anyone want to transmission, want to transmit at two point six. This one must wait to the start of time slot three. Okay, so you for sure you will not have any collision with, with, with this one. So the effect of collision will be on only one time slot, which is the time slot of collision. Okay, this that's why our vulnerable time here in slotted aloha will be only one time slot. Okay, but in pure aloha. Someone may to transmit at 1.7. So, for example, if you want, if you will start, let's turn to this figure. But okay, here. This is your frame. Okay, this is your frame. Okay, you want to confirm that in order to not have any collision, no one transmits. During this time stop, if you consider this as a time stop, okay, you want to confirm that no one transmit here, okay. This is we have one transmission time. You also want to confirm that no one transmit during this slot. Why? Because if anyone starts to transmit at any time during this slot, there will be collision with you. Here we start uh, after one uh, point one second, for example. We have collision with you. Uh, in the middle, we have collision with you. Okay. So in order to make sure that we will not have any collision, we want to free this transmission time and your transmission time. Okay. But here in the Aloha, you are sure that. The transmission in the previous slot has no effect on your transmission in your slot. Collision will happen only if we have more than one user transmit at the beginning of the same time slot. Is this clear to you? So, like, am I, do I understand this correctly? Like, okay. the, the solution to that is impossible for. A packet to be sent while another packet is like halfway through sent because we have these set boundaries. Now we we provide some control over time. In Bureau Aloha, we don't have any control over time. Once you want to transmit, transmit at any time. Right. No, now we start to synchronize it. We have we start to control the time by dividing the time into equal size time slot. This size is equal to the size of your frame. Okay, so now we are sure that no one can transmit at any time. No, you have to wait to the to, to the start of time slot to transmit. Okay, so that's why we are confident that only transmission having at the start of two will have collision, and the effect of this collision. Is, in, is on the transmission during time stop two only. If you, if you for example, if you send a, a packet during time stop one, it's okay, you have no error. If you transmit a packet in time stop three, you have no collision. The collision is only now, as we can see, in time stop two. Okay. So, slow it a little bit, like it, it will reduce our vulnerable time, but it's still not going to fix the fact that we're going to have a ton of errors. Because looking at that, as we have more uh, requests coming in, they're just going to start cascading because you're going to have everybody say you have 1.5 and 1.7 there. They're going to both jump to two. 
they're going to go, okay, there's a collision, they both have to wait. Those two then go back into a random generated time with a queue, and you're going to have more requests coming at the same time. So it's just going to generate more and more collisions as you go. I agree with you. Okay. And again, a lot of techniques are not efficient with high number of users. Again, you must, you, you must know this, okay? But this technique in, in Stuttgart Aloha, Stuttgart Aloha can reduce the number of collisions compared to pure Aloha, but still not efficient. And we will see this. I make you know this journey <laughs> of random accidents. Okay, so again, this is the basic idea of Stuttgart Aloha. And as we can see here, frame one, one one will be transmitted collision free. But frame two one and the frame three one will have errors. Frame one, two, and the frame four, one will have collision. Okay, but the collision here will not affect the collision here. This is collision, and this is another collision. Frame two, two will be collision free. Frame four, two will be collision free. Frame three, two will be collision free. So, again, again the difference between your aloha and stupid aloha. If you transmit at any time, the probability of collisions decrease. But if I control the time and I tell you, no, you must wait to the start of, of certain time slot, I minimize collision, okay? So this is why student aloha is considered as improvement over aloha. But again, student aloha, pure aloha is not efficient for the current Wi-Fi networks, no. Okay, so this is the basic operation of student aloha, this key, the mm -hmm. image key. Okay, so at first, again, we set our back off to zero, okay? And a check, is, the, is we are now at the start of a time slot? No. So you must wait until the end of current time slot to start your transaction. Okay. If yes, I am now at the start of a time slot, send your data packet and wait for acknowledgement. Receive acknowledgement. The transmission is collision free. Done. Didn't receive any acknowledgement. Oh, this means that we have a collision. So you must increment your back off. And after that, check. Which is to the limit? Yes, stop. No, still my first three transmission. So wait for random time. And after you wait for random time, you must wait to the end of the current time slot that you have. And return back, check, okay, send. This is the basic either of student aloha. So it's a basic difference. And your aloha, we don't have any control over anything. Actually, the transmitter wants the transmitter wants to, to transmit, transmit. And the transmit determine its own uh, random time, okay? Here, no, we start to have some control over the time by dividing the time into discrete time slots. So this is the vulnerable time. The only way you will have a collision is when two users transmit at the same time slot. This vector or this frame will make any collision to this frame? No. So our vulnerable time now is the transmission time with frame only. So in pure Aloha, it was double the transmission time per frame. Here in the Aloha, it is only one transmission time per frame. Okay, so if you want to calculate the throughput of the student Aloha, it will be the same as in pure Aloha. But here 
in, in, in Bure Aloha, we calculate our throughput based on that we have vulnerable time equal to double transmission time frame. So we expect the load to be 2G. So we have our throughput to equal G multiplied by exponential minus 2G. Okay, but here, no, we have our vulnerable time is, is only one transmission time. So we expect that the load will be G, 1G. So our throughput will equal G exponential minus G. And so in pure Aloha, we have G exponential minus 2G. Okay, here we have only minus. So let's take the same example in the pure Aloha and compare our result to what we have here in Stuttgart Aloha. Remember, in pure Aloha, our result is that we are able to transmit 135 frame collision free only from 1,000 frame. Our efficiency is equal to 13.5%. Okay, this, is, this was our result in Bure Alo. Let's discuss this example in Stuttgart Alo. Okay, we have the same example. We have 200 bit frames on shared channel of 200 kilobit per second. So if we want to calculate the transmission time per frame, we will divide the number of bits per frame over the data rate of the shared channel. So we will have the transmission time frame equal to one millisecond. We want to create or transmit 100 frames per second, which, which will mean that we will create one frame every one millisecond. Okay, so the load during the frame transmission time will equal to one. If we calculate the throughput using this equation, we will have. 36.8%. This means that we have 368 frames collision free from the one something. So our efficiency will equal to 36.8%. So we double our throughput. We double our efficiency. We double the number of collision-free frames. We minimize the collision to the half as compared to pure alone. But is this enough for you? If you, if you, if you transmit one, thousand frame and only 368 frames collision free. Will, will you be satisfied? No. no. So this is a compare between the robot of Aloha. This one is for pure Aloha and this one for Aloha. And as you can see here, we double this robot. But this not efficient. Not efficient for what? For our application today. But this was efficient in uh, 1970 or 1980, okay? Or 1990 also. But now we are, we are hungry for data rates. We are, for sure, yeah, <laughs> we are hungry for data rates. So this thing is not efficient today, but it can give you ideas how the researchers think. For sure, we didn't invent 5G as the first day. We invented 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and now we are working to, the, to 6G. So in order to be able to make development to 5G, I must understand what happened in 4G, 3G, 2G, 1G, and learn from this journey. Okay, so this we compare here between your Aloha and the state Aloha to summarize the Aloha techniques. 
according to the transmission, we have that anyone can transmit data randomly at any time. No coordination between any users. Once we have that transmit, transmit. For student Aloha, okay. No coordination between users, but we coordinate in terms of time. So we divide. You, you, you can transmit only at the beginning of a time slot. This time slot can be random, okay, but you are committed to transmit at the beginning of time slot. For the time, we have time spontaneous and not synchronized. Here in Student Aloha, the time is discrete. We uh, 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 have synchronization between users according to the start and the end of each time slot. For vulnerable time, we know that in your Aloha, we have double frame transmission time. In Slut Aloha, we have one frame transmission time. And this is the relation of robot. And this means that our maximum efficiency here in your Aloha is 18.4. In Slut Aloha, we have 36.8. Okay, collision. We don't have any control over collision in your Aloha. In Slut Aloha, we can minimize the total collision to the half compared to your Aloha. Okay, so Slut Aloha is better than your Aloha as we can see here, but it's not enough. And I want to add something. Your Aloha is still considered a, a simple, simple protocol. It is the simplest one. As in Slut Aloha, we will need to have synchronization to determine the start and the end of each time slot. And again, each technique or every technique which requires synchronization is complex to do this. Okay. So in our next lecture, we will discuss how can we improve more the performance of random access. Okay. But I want to know first if you are the scientist who will work to develop more the student aloha technique. What will you do? Give ideas. You, you now understand the operation of your aloha and the operation of split aloha from your opinion. What is the problem in aloha techniques? Okay. And if we solve this problem, can we improve more the performance of random protocols, random main protocols? So you have now in the board, the explanation of your aloha and stood aloha. There is problem here in aloha technique. Okay. Like if you could figure out a way so that you never have an empty time slot, like that would require some type of memory and like creating a buffer so that if you have two packets that are going to be sent at the same time, instead of sending them at the same time and having a collision, like buffer one and use the next time slot. Just because I'm thinking like so, empty time slot is a big answer. So okay. So okay. So if I have collision between Daniel one and Daniel two, okay. So your idea is that you will buffer. Daniel 2, for example, to the next time slot. Yeah. And, and so I Daniel 1. Yeah. Complete is Yeah. But when collision occur, we have accident. Yeah. So you, have, you have to do it before the collision. Like you before, have to see that you have to like. Who, have a layer who, who should do, do this? The, the, the transmitter. Daniel 1 and Daniel 2. So how can Daniel 1? Know that Daniel to transmit now. Like if they send on their own channels to like an intermediary intermediary node. I don't know. Now it's getting a little complicated, but like a router essentially, maybe. So the router or can a switch, same idea. Yeah, yeah. So so network device, network device yeah. can tell Daniel one, don't transmit now as Daniel two is transmit. Yeah, maybe something like that. Good idea. This is also a practical one. Yeah, we can do it. Okay, I agree with you. Nice.
Um, I kind of like, yeah, I agree with Evan in the sense of like, you definitely want to minimize the amount of empty cells you have. Um, I think that like, like the next step, that would be like a few steps ahead because I think buffers and everything are probably a little more advanced than they are at this point. But I would think maybe like instead of doing a random time on collision fail, like you start doing set times, like you start having a calculated time that would take you to a MP slot. Like the system would know that, you know, there's two collisions. So Daniel gets two second delay, Daniel two gets a 10 second delay or a five second delay. I want to highlight something that we are in the room. So this is a transmitter and this is a channel. That's it. Okay. We are here. In the channel, we are in the air. We don't have any buffer in the air. Okay. So the only case I can keep copy of Daniel 1 and Daniel 2 in the buffer is this packet is received by the, the, the receiver. But when we are in the air, do you see any, any buffer in the air? No. So once the collision happens, the insurance will estimate this accident as total loss. So any idea based on having a buffer, I think will not be effective. Okay. So what's the answer? I will see answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, but from me, from my, if I'm student, and I make analysis to to the Aloha techniques, I feel that the problem is once I have data to transmit, transmit. Even if I have to wait to to the start of uh, of of a time slot. And I transmit. This is the problem. <clears throat> okay. In order to minimize collision, users must coordinate between each other. Okay. I believe this. Okay. So the main problem is we have unpolite things. You must take a permission to transmit. Okay. So if we make I will design a protocol following this idea. Okay, so we can minimize collision. And this is, is aligned with your idea. You, you, you want something to coordinate, to tell, to give permission to Daniel one to transmit and Daniel to this way. Okay, so you we want as traffic officer to uh, uh, stop this one, go come, stop. Transmit, we need someone to lead the orchestra of transmission. Okay. But also we, we, we need our transmission to to be to remain flexible. Okay. We want that to be we have some random random transmission. And this random transmission will make some collisions. So our Ask to minimize collision as much as we can, and I want to let you know there is techniques that prevent collision as they end. Okay, this is what we'll we know in the next lecture. Okay, and uh, I'm happy at the end of this lecture we have one valid solution that we can implement. <laughs> yeah, so this is good. Okay, so see you. Uh, on Wednesday, and remember the deadline of your assignment. Wednesday, okay? Okay.